us with. What do you want to be remembered for in this life? Think about that. It will push you and I to live our life with eternity in mind. I'd like to bring a word to you, a short word, but very challenging. Somebody say challenging. And it's related to family, specifically marriage, relationship. Because the devil has one thing in mind, is to destroy families. When he scattered families, he destroyed the purpose of God in the lives of individuals. Today you can hear around the place. Prisons are filled. Juvenile, de juvenile delinquency on every corner because family is scattered. Husband fighting wife, wife fighting husband. Children don't know where to stand anymore. So this message I'm going to give you, please, is not for your neighbor. The first member of the congregation is me. All right? Is the preacher. So it begins with me. So when I'm speaking, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me and you. So please, this is not for your neighbor. It's for you. And it's very challenging. I will just look better than you because I dealt with it already as I was, you know. Allow me to put it on. Project me my title, please. Let go of your... Say it, everybody say it. Every issue in any family, in any relationship, don't go look far. It's not your wife the problem. It's not your husband. It's not the devil. It's a pride issue. How come there's no amen? <laughs> Satan is after destroying families. Because he want to destroy legacies, just like we just saw today. He want to put an end to the life of Minister Mercy, so he can put an end to the life of Isaiah. And to the life of the children of Isaiah. That's what his job is. He's after you because of the future. The one who control the family control the future. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 says, no, leave Ephesians alone actually. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 5b. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 5b. Clothe yourself with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. Ephesians 5 now, 21 says, And be subject to one another in the fear of the Lord. That word subject means to literally put yourself in the proper order. When there's no order in the family, there's a disorder. And when there's a disorder, the devil has entrances in those families. At the end of this sermon, I want everybody to have a repentant heart. Who can say, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me, I humble myself. That's the only way you can be in good relationship with your spouse. Nothing less, nothing more. I'm coming. We need to stop doing what is not working. Your anger is not working. Your finger pointing is not working. Slapping on the table is not working. Accusing one another is not working. Raising the voice is not working. Even your spiritual warfare is not working for you because you miss to do what needs to be done first. That's why even the counseling doesn't work. Why? Pride is the issue. 
Proverbs 13, 10 says in the NLT, pride leads to conflict. If you're in conflict between husband and wives, it's because of pride. It leads to conflict. But those who take advice are wise. I'm going to run you through. I will give you now a test. So yourself, you will mark yourself. And at the end, you will know how much pride you need to deal with. Is that okay? You, you will need to pass the test, all right? I'll give you nine signs that you're struggling deeply with pride and it will destroy your family if you're not careful. Number one, post it. Everything is personal. Remove number two for me, please. I want only number one. Everything is personal. When pride is working in the life of a wife or a husband, they have an elevated view of themselves. They have a high view of themselves. And when pride enters in, everything begins to be about them. Whenever you feel everything has to be about you, pride has entered. It's not knocking at the door. It had already entered. Every time somebody brings a different viewpoint, that you're not in agreement with, or a different perspective, and you felt they're attacking you, pride has entered. Anytime somebody disagrees with you, you feel it's an attack. A different viewpoint, you feel it's an attack. Pride has entered. Every opposition, every different view, you feel assaulted. That word seems very strong. But that's why the defensiveness comes in. Because you feel assaulted. Even if it's simply a disagreement. Pride has entered in. Number two. Fault finding. When somebody deals with pride, they always find a way to see what is not working. They become blinded to not see what is good in their spouse. If you ask them, tell me two things that are really amazing about your spouse, they will, it will take them one minute. Think about it. Uh, okay, that, okay, what is that? But if you said, tell me ten things that are not very nice about your spouse, they don't think. It's like, ba 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 because they are more aware of what is not working in the life of their spouse than they are aware about how glorious that spouse is. Fault finding. Because pride requires that you look at people as you are better than them. So because you have pride make you feel like better than the people, you better not see what they are good at. You are conducted and influenced to look at what they are not good at so that it can still keep you up above them. Are you catching me, somebody? And those people, sometimes they feel like they have become experts in false finding. It's like they, they gift. I have a discerning gift. I discern what's not working. All right? They really, and they put the seal of the Holy Ghost on. Tell your neighbor, it's not about you he's talking about. It's like these people are false finding glasses. All right? And when they view life with those lenses, 
It's only problem that they see. They actually believe that finding false is the gift, as I said. And they do that with everyone. They start at home with their spouses, their children, their pastors, their bosses at work, their co-workers, everybody. They, they are always finding false. False finding is a sign that pride has entered your heart. You are not a referee. You're a wife. You're a husband. You're not a referee. Number three. Refusal to be influenced by your spouse. When you see a man or a woman refusing to be influenced by the spouse, pride has entered in. What do you mean? You know, humility has a way to be open. Humility opens to change. But pride paralyzes you and keeps you in the same spot. Nobody can influence you. You do things the way you want. You can be influenced by your spouse. You know, whenever you get in a place where you can be influenced by your spouse, you have lost respect for them. Because you have brought them so low in your subconscious, they are so low, how can I take in anything that those, this low being is advising me? You know, I, I, can, I can take this advice. Because remember, I have elevated myself above you in such a way, and you have become so low, you're not good enough. So your advisors, if I take them, will be raising you up to my level. So I cannot allow you to influence me. I will be low like you. Like nobody says that, of course, all right? But that's the way it's working. We refuse to be influenced by our spouses. Your wife can't even give you an advice. You have to go pray and fast for 40 days so God can talk to you directly. <laughs> no, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with praying and fasting for God to talk to you. But you just, you just don't like to be influenced by your spouse. You don't want it to say, oh, you were right. That's pride. Number four. Ignorance of the needs of your spouse. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Pride keeps us from caring for our spouse. It's pride. Pride blinds you so you don't see the need of your spouse. You see only yours. All right? You become ignorant. Your wife can be suffering until. Your husband can be dying until. You never notice it. And even if she mentioned or he mentioned it, you feel like, ah, is that the problem? Because, you see, you are so full of yourself, all right, that you don't see anybody else need just yours. I, 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 I. Pride does that. I'm going quick. I'm going to tell you how oh, you don't see the need. This one, I had to deal with it, all right? This one, specifically this, this one, I have to deal with it. Here's the way it works. Your wife breaks her hands. Right? She's in pain. And the only thing that came to your head is the inconvenience that's going to bring, this thing going to bring to your life. <laughs> now you can laugh. You know I'm talking to you. You, you understand? You're feeling, oh, I will, she will not be able to cook anymore because the hand is broken. You know, the poor girl, 
she is suffering. Yes. And you do care, but, but you care more for the, oh, man, we will not be able to go do this for you, you, you. What is it going to inconvenience you? Just the fact that she broke her hand. Instead of caring, baby, oh, is it okay? You are suffering. Oh, it's so painful. Don't worry. You stay home. I'm going to take care of the kids. Now you're going, oh, my God, I would love to take care of the kids now. All right? <laughs> Am I talking to real human beings? That's pride. You don't see people's need. Somebody is suffering, and you're wondering what it's going to cost you. All right? Are you catching this one? If we deal with this, we'll have more kisses, more love, peace, more legacies to carry. But if we refuse to deal with this, it's going to be a Jackie Chan, World War II. It's like some people got married by the justice of war instead of the justice of peace. I mean, it's fight. Praise the Lord. Amen. I remember one day, this one? I remember one day I was away, and my wife went to pick up my son at the school, all right? And uh, she, she slid and she fell down because it was icy. <laughs> and she called me, oh my God, my leg is... The first thing that came to me, How's Amadou? <laughs> Are you catching me? In number one, I mean, she, she's painting and I'm asking about my lineage. I mean, this is very insulting. She feel like she said, I told you, I just felt. <laughs> God bless my wife. She's very patient because I'm not an easy person. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting me? Yes. Ignorance to the need of others, no good. Number five, addiction to attention. Pride demands attention. Because we, the pride, believe, is more important than anybody, than everything. And therefore, he assumes everything should be about him. Everything becomes about what we want, what we think, what we desire, and how the situation impacts me as pride. Thank you, Jesus. Number six, refusal to submit to authority. A prideful person actually believes they have it all figured out. They will not listen to an expert. Husbands, can I say something? I'm a husband too, you know that, all right? Husbands, that's why we don't like to go to counseling. When the wife is mentioning we need to go for help, you feel like, help to go where? I'm here already. <laughs> Because you don't like to submit to another authority, even the experts speak to you and you feel like you are more than an expert. So when you go to counseling, you actually go to counseling just so the counselors can confirm what you think. That's right. This is not only for husbands, though. It's for women, too, of course. That's right. You don't want somebody to tell you what to do because you know everything. So what do you mean we need to go to the counselor? Everything is doing amazing here. <laughs> you always have a false sense of how, what amazing is. Be careful. Pride destroys families. Number seven. The inability to see oppos opposing viewpoints. Because pride will cause you to crown yourself with your own way of thinking. My way or no way. Be careful. Be careful. 
You know, it's amazing when you deal with a prideful person. They always have a better way. It's never good enough. Am I talking to somebody? No, hidden in the house. The husband can do whatever. This woman will find something. The woman can do whatever. The husband will find something. You know, sometimes you just need to relax, chill out, appreciate what your spouse has sacrificed to do, even though you're better in that area. Leave it alone. Let him at least have one week or one day of celebration or be happy about himself before you chop them from the field. No, 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 that's not good enough. We need to redo this. This is not good enough. You see, let them just enjoy at least the fruit of their labor. This guy have gone to Google. He studied what Google is doing. He studied how to build this. He did all this to make you happy. And of course, he hang the door the wrong way. <laughs> Let the door wrongly hanged for two days at least. <laughs> and, and, and during those two days, brag about him. Wow, baby, you're so handy. That is amazing. <laughs> and then when he's at work, call the carpenter, come and put this thing right. And don't tell him that you did it. That's the way you do it. But instead of coming in, oh, no, 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 no. You see, what about the effort? What about the intention? What about the sacrifice? Come on, talk to me. A couple of days ago, my wife wanted me to hang some uh, <laughs> window covers. I'm the less handy guy on the planet, all right? And she goes, no, you need to drill this and you need to drill that. <laughs> and I'm exhausted. <laughs> Number one, exhausted. Number two, no good at drilling anything. <laughs> I'm feeling, where is Randy Nicholson? Where is Pastor Joe? <laughs> I need help. <laughs> so I went and tried to do this. I'm hanging up there. <laughs> and then I go, baby, you know what? I'm going to call this guy. I'm going to pay him. <laughs> The guy came and fixed it in two seconds. It looks amazing. <laughs> Hear me. <laughs> Don't be a fixer. Pride. Pride wants everything to be positioned perfectly. Why did you put it this way? Is that to, it, it, even the change is this. They will still mention it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You know what? This is like this. I know you don't like it like that. You want it this way. All right? But for this Sunday service, leave it like this. <laughs> Next Sunday, you take the basket, let them put it this way. Leave it like that. The same money is still going here. It's not more if you put it this way. So, and this guy is doing his, his best. It's not the time to come and say, why do you put this like that? Did it? Pride. Pride doesn't like to see things that are not perfect. That's where perfection is come from. And in the name of, you know what, I like excellency. I like it excellent. In the name of excellent, you are hiding pride. Leave it alone. This world is not perfect yet. We just heard it from Mama Mercy. Are you hearing me? We've been changed from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Nobody has it together. We are all project in construction here. This chair could be more blue than it is blue. This carpet could be more gray than it's gray. And if it's not that blue, it's okay. At least people are sitting in it. Don't try to be God by recreating the world. Rest. Rest. Some perfectionists are going, okay, is this tie matching with the shirt and the shirt is matching with this? How's the tie is? Is the microphone is properly positioned? Why is he moving around? He needs to be more positioned. These things should be like that. Leave the, the cell phone down. Don't walk with the cell phone. It's not good enough. And your accent is not, you know, why don't you pronounce this word properly? Leave me alone. <laughs> you are not my maker. Perfectionist. Perfectionist. Pride. 
From today, don't call it I'm a perfectionist. Say I'm prideful. That's the, name, that's the word for it. Your husband in his own house is walking like an egg because you are positioned thing. He goes in the bathroom and the guy ends up cleaning the bathroom more than the mess he made because you're going to walk after him and say, why did you leave the water here? You need to clean it. Finally, you're like in a jail. You're walking like a Terminator in the house. Who put the socks here? Why did you put the clothes here? Why did you put that? I have put the box like that. You move it this way. Hey, leave it alone. It's pride. You know, one day I was waiting in the line, all right? At the elevator. How many times you put the elevator? Ten times. Ten times. Because you're prideful. Because it's not fast enough for you. <laughs> or you think people on the line, they are less busy than you, and they, they have less short, important chores than yours. You think they don't have children like you? So there's a line, you're like, like an ADD, you know, moving your body. I can't wait to get my, oh, thank you. Jumping over, you understand, just cool down. This world is not about you. After you, it will still be. And by the way, you're going to make it on time at home. There is no need to... People driving the traffic who don't like to stay in the line. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> because you think your agenda is more important. Yeah. The highest esteem of yourself. Until you are the president of this country where they're going to put the sirens and the red carpet, you are just a citizen. Get in line and wait for your turn. Amen. Are you catching me today? Yes. Oh. Things have to be done your way, always. This is wrong. Eden God, the God of all excellences, he still let us be making mess. And he put up with it. But you and I, who do we think we are? Do you know that's what destroy relationship? Marriage relationship? That's what it is. I went and counseled a couple. They fought because the laundry was, uh, the, 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 the dishes were not washed. Or, oh, you know, you always eat in your plate and you never clean it. No one is your slaves here. The plate, because of a plate. <laughs> okay, quickly. Number eight. Never ask for help or expect it, but expect service. I will explain this one to you. You know, the pride, the proud do, doesn't ask for help, but they expect you to serve. Because if they ask for help, it makes them little. But because they think they are so amazing, you should be at their service. Service is due to them. Uh, if I ask, I'm, I'm lowering myself, all right? I should not lower myself. So I, I won't ask. You are supposed to know my needs. I mean, seriously? How come you're not doing this? But, baby, you didn't ask anything. You don't know you should be doing that? Uh, why do you want me to ask you that? Is it not obvious enough? That I'm a king of kings, and then you should be at my service? Is that not obvious enough? You see, they don't ask because it makes them vulnerable, but yet they're expecting you to do things without asking. That's pride. Have you ever seen a man driving, trying to get to a place he doesn't have a GPS to get there? And the wife is going, Baby, let's stop at a gas station and ask. No, no, don't worry, I know where we're going. I know where we're going. <laughs> I know where we go. Zoo, 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 zoo. Five minutes, baby, we are getting late. You, we should ask this person. Don't worry. Do you want to take the wheels? Let me dry. I know where we are going. How many men have done that beside me? Thank you for being honest. I've done it. I go, my baby, do you want to drive now? I am driving. In other words, don't you know who I am? Do you want me to, to waste my... I know what I'm doing. Because you don't like to ask. It makes you look little. Pride. 
Asking save time. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, run. Number nine and the last one. It is hard for them to say sorry. You know the prideful person? For them to say forgive me, you literally need to have 20 sermons on, on that subject. You, you understand? You need an intercession team to be praying and fasting so that they can at least say. And even when they want to say sorry, they begin to sweat. Because it's too hard. Because you are, it's crushing them. It, it's making them feel so little. And when at last, after how many hours of trying, when finally they said, I'm sorry, they will add, but you know, uh, <laughs> but it's not only, you know, you heard me too, but you know, but leave the butt alone, all right? <laughs> Repent and ask for forgiveness without pointing finger to the other person. You did not come to ask for forgiveness expecting them to do the same. But, you know, uh, uh, but, pride is killing families, killing relationships. And we are there chasing after the demons. It's because we are prideful. Most conflicts in the household have their source into pride. Now close your eyes. Where there is pride and conflict, there's no intimacy. There's no trust. Father, I give you thanks. We know where we're at this morning. We want to carry out a legacy for our families like we witnessed today through the family of Samson. We heeded to the voice of how we would like to be remembered. How we would like to have our family being remembered. But in all things, we come before you humbly and ask you to forgive us for every expression of pride in our marriages, in our relationships. Even though pride want to justify, even though pride want to explain their side, but in the bond of love, in the marital covenant that you have established between husband and wife, stronger, than any art. Father, we ask you to forgive us. Cleanse our heart from every seed of pride. We humble ourselves before you because it's not about us. We want to imitate you. Even though you were right and even though you were falsely accused, yet, you stretched your arms on the cross and you said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Yet none of them responded back to you because of your love for mankind. Let the love of the Father begin to fill our hearts and bring us to a place of humility where we can acknowledge our setbacks and stop accusing our spouses, our partners. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. You say in 1 John 9 that if we repent with a true heart, you are faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. All our sins. Do not resist us. Because you resist the proud. Father God, remove every resistance that you have released against anybody, any family. Release the resistance. Release the confrontation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
my last word of two minutes and you'll go home. And I want to speak to us as immigrant. And I want you to hear me for immigrant. Number one, we come from other country. The way we were raised is not the way children that were born here were raised. And so sometimes it can be a disaster where you lose the opportunity to even connect with your children. Not because you don't want to connect with them, because you know what? They were born here, they grew up here, they see things differently. You know, back home, our fathers, they don't hold us in their hands and go with us to watch a baseball game and all this stuff. But here, the children need that. And sometimes you can feel out of phase because you're trying to raise them up in the way you were raised. It doesn't work. So you become a stranger to your children. The greatest gift you can give your wife, I'm talking especially to fathers, it is to make time for your children. When a wife sees you taking care of the children, bonding with them, she loves you immediately, automatically. It pleases her. And the same thing is true for children. When the child sees you loving his mother, it makes the child grow secure. So guess what? It's not too late we learn to do things differently. So this December, I want to command every father. It doesn't matter how old your children are. Leave mom out of it. Because usually children have, don't have much problem to connect with their mother. Because she is the one who nurtures so much. Fathers, take your boys and girls. Not together, one at a time, on a date. Go out just, if they are boys, just go out. This is boys' days. In the beginning, it will look awkward because they never seen you do that. But it's okay. They will appreciate it nevertheless. Even if they don't voice it, it will mean something to them. It will may look cold in the beginning. You'll have to think what you're going to say. But it's okay. God will give you grace. Ask mom. She can give you some great ideas because usually the mothers know what the children like. Go do something they like, not you like. And when you're out there with it, don't give them commands and tell them what you want them to be or to become. It will turn the kids away from you. I have been there. I told you about Rafaela when she was younger. I was an A-plus student to a point to jump classes. I had a good brain. But these young girls, growing up with an autistic brother, did not have even time to sleep. But yet she will perform B. She will have B, B plus. And now look at her uh, report card. And she could feel in my eyes like, where are the A pluses? Right? I regret to have done that. And when I saw that I've done wrong, I stopped. From that day forth, I praise her. Because I know Whatever report card is on it, whatever the mark is, she's done her best. Don't expect your children to fulfill your dead dreams. The dream that you never got a chance to fulfill. I know you wanted to be a doctor, and you didn't end up being one. You don't need a doctor in your family. Let them choose what they are naturally comfortable and gifted by God to do. And it's okay if they are not doctors, it's not a disappointment, because the world is not made of doctors. It's made of human beings with different talents, and God chose to do so. 
some time in my case. Our family is a scholar family. My dad is a professor of the university at McGill. He has a big brain. I graduated with honors at Ecole Polytechniques. We take pride in that in our family. And so because of that, you will have a tendency to push your children into that. Many people are asking me, oh, which university Rafaela is at? You know what? I told Rafaela, baby, you need to recover from the struggle we've gone through. Take your time. We are not competing against anybody. Because our path is not the path of others. Will you give yourself a gift today to be patient with yourself? You're not fighting against anybody. Just chill out. Relax. You are here today not because you are so powerful. But if you are so tough with yourself, as if you are fighting against yourself, no rest. Oh, no, no I got to get something done. I have to do We need to go. Oh, time is... Cool down. Cool down. Cool down. Jesus Christ had a three years ministry that changing the whole world. Be patient with your children. Allow them to express their God-given ability. And in all things, when you go out with them, take pictures. Do your best to be funny, even though you're the most serious father that exists. <laughs> Have fun with your boys. Push them around. Provoke them. Let it be a laughter moment. Why? That's the way you build memories. And memories is what children will remember. Up to today, my wife will say, I remember when my dad used to take us to go swim. I say, wow, your dad was taking you in Africa to go swim? Lucky you, all right? Because us, you swim in the river with crocodiles. <laughs> and the water is so red, you can't see anything. But her, she used to be taken by dad. They go swim, then after she buy, he buy them cake and Fanta, I say, whoa, God, this is not fair. I think I came out okay at the end of the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Family matters. Legacy matters. And it begins today. May the Lord bless you. Stand up all. I would like to, you to hug 30 people today before you leave. 30 people. Yes. 30 people. Uh, Terry Langard is going to Uganda. I would like to pray for him. Hug 30 people today. Terry Langard, quickly come. A missionary is going out, so we're going to pray for him. Okay, I want you to stop now. Stop now for one minute. Stop now for one minute. Stop now for one minute. Stop now. Now, I know you, are, you, you did only two, okay? So you have 28 to go. I want you to stretch out your hands. This man is going to Uganda to minister and help a church that has been going there already. Uh, Apostle Joshua was a friend of ours. It's like we are connected in some ways. And Terry, we know you're going there to do an amazing work, as you always done. And we want to tell you you're going not just, but with authority. Let's pray for him. Stretch your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we send your servant. This man has been a blessing in this house. Early in the morning, he's in the house. At odd moments, even with the snow and the cold, he's in the house. He is a servant. And so we bless him today, and we release him to Uganda for this amazing moment.